When talking about the most delusional celebrities, you can't not mention Steven Seagal. While at one point he was a somewhat respected martial artist and actor, today he's known for his horrible straight-to-DVD movies, fondness of Eastern European war criminals, and most importantly, his egregious lies. Bro, I totally had sex with five girls last night, I swear. Some of Seagal's lies include fighting the Yakuza for rights to a dojo, and of course, winning that fight, working and helping trained CIA operatives in the 70s and being the first private citizen to destroy a nuclear device. That last one is on his official website. Seagal knows himself as the coolest, most badass guy on the planet who is tougher than anybody else, and backs this up through insane lies that are undermined with literally five minutes of research. I would hesitate to even call him a liar because he is so delusional, he seems to actually believe his own lies. This is Steven Seagal, the most delusional man on the planet. He's still fine? Yes, I do. He's still dangerous? Seagal's mom said he was a skinny, small kid who suffered from asthma. Luckily for her, he would grow up to be a fat, airheaded, washed up actor. Seagal was born in Lansing, Michigan, to a mother of Irish descent and a father of Russian Jewish descent. I I'm Russian. My family are from Vladivostok and Belarus and, you know. Not Russian Mongol, as Seagal claims. I'm a Russian Mongol. While not being a Mongol, Seagal has used his Russian heritage to leverage a relationship with Eastern Bloc presidents such as Putin of Russia, who himself is so delusional he sets up a hockey game with him and the best players in the world where he scores like eight goals. <laughs> and Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus both considered the two last dictators of Europe. Seagal has also said some interesting stuff regarding the ongoing conflict, but that's past the point. He isn't famous for being a descendant of Genghis Khan, he's famous for his martial arts skills. Seagal is a master in Aikido, which is a uh, interesting martial art. Some people say it's legit and others say it's about as fake as Seagal's hairline. <laughs> Regardless of how you feel about Aikido, you can't deny the fakeness of Seagal's demonstrations in Russia. I mean, look at this guy. Look how bored he looks. Seagal ended up moving to Japan in the 70s to teach Aikido, which is where a lot of his BS comes from because it's hard to fact check stuff from 1970s Japan. So you'll just have to take the man's word that all of his stories around this time are true. He taught Aikido in Japan becoming a master, then taught back in California until Hollywood came a knocking. He took this opportunity to turn himself into a movie star in the late 80s and early 90s. He was in big movies like Above the Law, Out for Justice, and Under Siege. While these weren't necessarily critically acclaimed, they did numbers at the box office and launched Seagal's star. He got so big that he even hosted SNL and was considered the worst host of all time. Were you there for Steven Seagal? Yes. You were? Yes. No. Yes. For those who don't know, he is widely and unanimously considered Close. the worst host in the history of SNL. If you make fun of yourself, it will benefit you, and we promise you. And if you don't, and you fight it so much, and that was him, he was too cool and had his image, he wouldn't do kung fu fighting as a uh, cold open oh my God. or a monologue, and it was like, everybody was going. <laughs> The SNL clips of Seagal have been mostly scrubbed from YouTube, but you can find them if you dig hard enough, and trust me, they're worth it. By the way, I was there when he hosted SNL, one of the most famous nightmare, like, <laughs> can't reshow that show ever. He, he wrote a scene, and it's the last scene in the show. They got some stuntmen to come in. It was, it's insane. And then there's like some speech and then he enters the banquet room and starts beating, it's live. And he's beating them up. And then at the very end, he turns to camera and says, this is what happens when you pollute the planet. Seagal also used this fame to mingle with the stars. How do you do fellow celebrities? Including other Hollywood tough guys, in particular Jean-Claude Van Damme, who Steven seemed to dislike for no particular reason I can think of other than insecurity and jealousy. Thoughts on Jean-Claude Van Damme? 
Can I laugh in your face? Rumor has it that at a party Sylvester Stallone was hosting, the muscles from Brussels called out Seagal for talking shit, to which Seagal ran away, being the true martial artist he is. Seagal claims it was the other way around, however Stallone, who has no investment in this, confirmed the original story. And to be fair, one of these guys is a proven liar. It's not Stallone, it's not Jean-Claude Van Damme. Speaking of lies, Steven has many of them that span decades. As mentioned, spending a lot of time in Japan in the 1970s, he could get away with a lot of lies without anybody fact-checking them. Combine this with a quote-unquote tough guy persona and nobody challenging him on anything due to his celebrity status, let him get away with a lot of stuff he shouldn't have. I'm trying to pass down some of the secrets that have made me a master shooter, master shooter, master shooter, master shooter. Seagal has so many lies that fall apart under the smallest bit of research, but I'll just keep it to some of my favorite ones. He claimed to have escorted the Shah of Iran out of the country during the revolution in 1979. Do we need the National Guard? Nah, call Steven Seagal. Keep in mind, he wasn't a movie star at this point. This is before all of that. Another one he claims was being visited by a white dog to warn him that his dojo was being burnt down. But after he attempted to thank the dog, the dog was gone. I'm, I'm not joking, Seagal literally said this. And of course, having to fight the Yakuza for ownership over his gym after a debt. Not a gunfight, mind you, a, a martial arts fight, like straight out of a, a shitty 80s kung fu movie. He also has a ton of smaller lies, like claiming to move to Japan in 1968 when records show he was attending university in California at the time. And he most likely moved to Japan sometime in the 1970s, however the year can't be confirmed as Seagal has given conflicting reports on this. Most of his lies follow the same tropes as a D-list karate movie you'd catch on TV at 2 in the morning. I don't even think he's a liar because I think he lies so much he's pulled a George Costanza and believes it. Which is why delusional is just the perfect word to describe him. It's the big oaf who doesn't realize he is the butt of the joke. His whole fighting career is a bit shady as well. Unlike Jean-Claude Van Damme who has an actual fighting record, there are no records of Seagal ever fighting in tournaments or MMA bouts or boxing, anything. So you're going to have to take his word for all of his epic stories. Another rumor is that after after Seagal claimed nobody could choke him out, Jean LaBelle accepted his challenge and, well, choked him out. To which Seagal shit himself. While the details on this story are a bit messy, the one thing that stayed consistent was Seagal shitting himself after getting choked out. This video is sponsored by Guardio. Guardio is a browser extension available on the Chrome and Edge store. It runs scans in your browser to block harmful websites and malicious downloads. It'll block any and all phishing attempts, regardless of the link's source. After you install it, you'll get a free security scan that will detect existing threats on your browser. I think you'd be surprised to what you'll find. Once the scan is done, you'll get a free seven day trial to remove any threats detected. You think corporate software is keeping you safe? Have you seen these corporations? Once once you set up Guardio, your account is good for five family members, so you can protect them as well. Get Guardio now and protect your online browsing and information. Avoid installing malware and falling victim to scams, and get real-time alerts when your info is at risk. So if you want a clean and secure browsing experience, go to guard.io slash ghostgum, or use the link in the description, and check out their affordable premium plan for full protection. Seagal also gained a reputation for intentionally hurting stuntmen on set. This later escalated to hurt non-stunt men, including Sean Connery. Even Seagal. Oh, sure. Yeah, I was, we we're going to do a film called um, Never See Never Again, and there was a possibility I was going to do Aikido and what have you, and I got a hold of Stephen, and we had this um, training in the building where I had an apartment, and he was really very, very good and everything, and then I got a little cocky because I thought I knew what I was doing, then I got a bit flash and I did that, and he broke my wrist. Many people account stories of Seagal being a nuisance on set, such as John Leguizamo. I, I did a movie that called uh, uh, Executive Decision. Yeah. And, yeah. oh yeah, all three of you saw it. <laughs> and, and the first day we, we get together for rehearsal with the actors and the director, he comes in, I'm in command. What I say is law, you disagree? And I started cracking, I was like <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was kidding, we were yeah, just hanging yeah. out. Yeah. And he aikidoed me against the brick wall, pow! Knocked all the air, air out of me, I was like, what? What? Yeah. I mean, what I really want to say is how big and fatty he is and how he runs like a bitch. But ah! Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? I invited this 
Now, it's no secret at this time, Seagal wasn't very much liked in Hollywood. And there were some contractual things with his agent that allegedly had him blacklisted from big budget movies. Either that or they just realized how much of a goof he is. Steven Seagal emerges from one of the other anterior rooms in the mobile home. And he comes out and he said, I just read the greatest script I've ever read in my life. He goes, really? Who wrote it? I did. <laughs> but Seagal still wanted to act and keep his name out there. So he teamed up with Steamroller Productions to produce his own movies, which he would star in. And these are very, very, very good movies. So good that I could only stomach three of them. The common denominator of all these films, in case you wanted to watch them for some reason, is that besides being complete shit. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Cause now, I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. They all involve Seagal being a badass, special forces, martial arts master, or something of that degree. And him barely doing anything, including sitting down for most of it in an action movie. I will give them a bit of credit though, if there's anything good about them is that they're so god awful that they're kind of funny. I mean, just look at the cover art for Sniper Special Ops. They literally just photoshopped his head onto a smaller, skinnier guy. Now that Seagal is box office poison, he's forced to pump these movies out either for money or to make himself feel better or a combination of both. But he does more than just act. He was brought onto the Arizona police force for uh well, I, I honestly don't fucking know. He's also a blues singer. Seven doctors say. <laughs> For good love. He had his own energy drink in Australia, got into crypto, and is an alleged rapist. You've been very much caught up in all the allegations of sexual harassment. You had a rape allegation against you, and I wonder how you deal with all that. So if you felt bad for Seagal or thought I went a bit too hard on him, there you go. The weird thing about Steven is the negative attention surrounding him is almost completely self-inflicted. By attempting to make himself sound like the coolest guy ever, he became a laughing stock. And by taking himself so seriously, he has ensured literally nobody else will do the same. He's a 70 year old man who tries to one up everybody else like a 12 year old on the school grounds. Which is why I don't think anybody has any sympathy for him and I don't think he really wants sympathy. I think he wants to live out his days in Russia where nobody will question him ever and he can continue to pump out these dog shit movies. Which honestly is probably best for the rest of us. Well, I've said that. I said they, they should let Steven Seagal do a shot for shot remake of all the John Wick movies from memory. <laughs> Just his. And then John Wick meets the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama says to him, You are more of a Buddha than I am. Mm. And, but John is humble. He's yes. a humble spirit, so he says, No, Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're the same. A, we're the same. And I'm only slightly better. <laughs> all things are equal because we are all one. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm the biggest, the better I'm the top slightly. Of if you imagine the number one, I'm the nose part at the top, the little flag. And you're the <laughs> bottom, the, the feet. It's not even necessary. But we're both number one. We're both number one, but you're but the I'm part. I'm the little nose I'm the flag nose part. flag, and you're the part oh. you can leave off, and people still know it's a one. <laughs> or maybe it becomes a seven, which isn't even bigger number. 